What's up guys, today in this video, we are going to look at how we can use migrations from TypeORM and how we can configure TypeORM with our Nest.js application so that you know we can make Nest.js aware of the migrations. To start with, I have few notes and the first question which might come in your mind is, what are we trying to do? So what we are trying to do over here is if I first run my application, let it take some time to boot. And in the meantime, I'll show you my database. This database is empty, right? Now, when this application starts, can you see there are certain queries which got fired and they are create table queries. So this means if I now refresh my database, you can see there are four tables over here. And why is this happening? If we go into our type ORM configuration, which is inside source config type ORM config, right? You'll see I have synchronization as set to true. Okay. Which basically means that when the application starts, it will look at the entities in our application. So if I quickly go into our module, so you will see I have quiz module and user module. Okay. Inside user, I have only one entity, whereas inside quiz, I have three entities. And because of those four entities in total, I have four tables in my database. And what Nest.js does is when the synchronization is on, it will check what is the current status of our database and what is the current status of the entities. If it finds some difference, then it will add those columns or tables, whatever you know, necessary changes are required. But then the problem is, Synchronization is something which is not supposed to be on in your production database. Okay. So the ideal way to work with production databases, or even I would say, if you are working in a team, it will be good that your synchronization is off and you are only dealing with migrations. Those of you who are coming from a Laravel background, you will feel at home because migrations inside Laravel is a first class citizen whereas in in here we will have to do a little bit of configuration so that we can get those things in place so let's get started i'll go back to my notes again now before we answer the second question i guess i'll need to make those changes so in here i will be changing this a little bit right now my configuration is a class it, i'm exporting a class called type orm config and in that I have a static method get ORM config, which returns a type ORM module options. Okay. But then when I'm going to implement the migrations, there is going to be one problem. The type ORM needs a configuration, which is a little different from the nest.js configurations. Why? Let me show you app module. Can you see inside our Nest.js app module, this is you know, where the bootstrapping is happening. It says for root async. So we are implementing or we are getting an async configuration. But somehow the type ORM doesn't understand this async configuration. Okay. And hence we will be passing two different ones. One for Nest.js and the second one for type ORM. So let's quickly get started. I'll comment out everything in here. We don't need anything from them. And let's start with the first part of our configuration, which is going to be the Nest.js one. So the first object which I'm going to export is a constant called type ORM async configuration or config, which is of type type ORM module async options. Now let's see what all things do we have. We get name, use existing, use class, blah, blah, blah. And we get use factory. This is what we are going to use. So inside here, use factory is a property where we will pass this function and it returns an object. Now, this is, first of all, an async function. If you remember, the configuration inside app module expects an async. Uh, it's an async function, right? So it will wait for the configuration. So what I will do is over here, we will be returning a promise and the promise is of type 
type ORM module options. So far so good. So now this again will allow us to hmm, type ORM module options. Okay, it will allow us to return a few things and no, not this one. How do I get all the things? In yes, this is you know all the keys which are available. But I think what we will need are a few ones. For example, if you see there is type, it's uh, enum. We have MySQL. So, so most of them are over here. So I'll copy paste this and then I'll get back um, once and all the configuration is done. Right. So this is all the configuration that I have. The type, host, port. Port I had to do a parsing because it expects a number. Okay. Then username, password. The entities I need to tell, obviously, that was part of our previous configuration and then synchronize is true and logging is true. Now, because we have this, what we need to do inside our app module is say that we are expecting this configuration and we are passing that to for root async the function inside type or a module. So we have made some changes and we need to see whether these changes work for us or not. Now the rest of the configuration is kind of commented out or I have I can simply delete them, right? So I need to check whether this is working as it should. So the best way to do that is obviously I'll shut down my app, go to my database and first of all, delete those tables. And now if I run npm run start, based on what behavior we saw, it should ideally create all the tables again. So now there's some problem in our configuration. Let me see. So unable to connect to database. Is my database running still? Yes, it is. So it says unable to connect to the database. We try this. Okay. Option database is not set in your connection options. This is a bit weird. Have I missed something? Oh, yes, I have obviously. So the database is not defined and hence it is complaining about it process.env dot it will be db underscore uh, name let me quickly look at my env db name yes that's correct let me start again sorry for the mistake and let's wait for it all right so the app is running and we can see it again executed those queries, which means if I now go to my database and if I try to refresh, the four tables are again available to me. So this means at least the type ORM part of the configuration for Nest.js is working as it should, right? Because everything is in place. A few things which I would additionally like to add is in my notes which is migrations and inside migrations i have cli and the extra so that the these are the few new properties which are, which i would like to add so migrations i'm telling that these are inside this directory cli will use this directory okay and inside extra i have this correlation um character set defined so that any new table when it is getting created this is expected okay now let's go back to this configuration and this time we are going to create one more configuration we are going to export a constant called type orm config and this one is going to be again an object of type this type orm module options Okay. The only thing is, as you may have already guessed, this is not a promise based thing. It will directly return the configuration, right? So let me copy almost everything from here and synchronize. I don't need logging. Maybe I'll, I'll keep that as is. So this is the configuration which we will use inside uh, I mean, inside our application for the type or uh, the migrations part of it. Okay, Wh whatever is going to run through CLI. But then 
to get that from CLI, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extra file type ORM config migrations.ts and inside here I'll do import from our configuration and I'm going to import the type ORM config and not the async one and we'll export that. This exported item will be used inside the package JSON so that we can tell type ORM where to look for the configuration. And that is something which you will add over here. So these are the four, uh, sorry, five lines uh, which we need to add inside our package JSON. So I'll come over here and add this. Okay. So let's quickly look at what we are doing. So we are, have we have one uh, method called type ORM CLI. It, what it does is TS node dash R config path register. This is the CLI, you know, the binary which is available and we are passing the configuration from our folder which is src config type ORM config migrations.ts that is you know, what is getting exported with this our type ORM will be able to run so why don't we oh my z shell has an update I'll do that later type ORM CLI now if you run this and if you're getting this list of commands that means your type ORM is generally configured in proper way and you can even run the type ORM show no not show type ORM um, migration show oops what happened um, ba -ba -ba. type ORM CLI and then my is it migration show I'm just trying to see if I can run that command. Yes. So we can see it gave us some stuff in here. And if I refresh, can you see this new table? Now, it basically told that there are no migrations. So what I will do is maybe close the app. First of all, delete the tables. Save my package JSON and inside type ORM config. First of all, if you're working with migrations, right, then your synchronize should be false. There's no reason for you to keep both of them active. Okay. So this is done. Now I already have four entities and I would like to generate a migration for that. So what I'm going to do is type ORM. No not type ORM. Uh, let me go to my package JSON and migration create. Okay. That is something which I'm going to run. So migration generate, sorry, not create, generate base migrations. Okay. So it created a file inside migrations folder. Let me quickly have a look what got created. So inside source migrations, we have this file and you can see we have the create table for users, options, qu quizzes and questions. And then there are a few alter tables for adding the foreign keys. And there is the down method which drops everything. What are these two methods? If you ask, if you're not aware of migrations in general, then whenever we run the migrations, right, we have two commands. I have migration run. What that will do is check what all migration needs to be executed and inside every class it will execute the up command. Okay, that is running the migration. So the up function is being called. But if you want to revert a function uh, migration, right, then the down function is called. And that is how you are reverting a migration because if you revert the first migration, it is going to first delete the foreign, key cons foreign keys and then it, it is going to drop all the tables which are present. And as you can see, it does take the sequencing in to consideration. So it is first dropping the indexes of these two um, no, tables and then dropping these three tables and then it deleted this index and then it dropped the user. So everything 
in here is going to be taken care by itself and if you need to understand what is basically happening the migrations the type ORM when it is generating the migration right it will read all your entities it will see what's your current schema do a diff and whatever is necessary right those SQL queries will be created as you know these query runner dot query thing and this is the beauty of migrations now the, everything is under version control so now if I delete everything if my database is empty as if you have just checked out this code base right your database is completely clean so I'll run npm run migration and then run and let's see what happens okay so it did quite a few things let's look at the database I have users table yes everything is in place and inside migrations can you see there is id1 timestamp and it says this one is executed so if i now revert can you see these things got executed which means now if i refresh my table is empty the migrations table will be there because it keeps a track of what is there and what needs to be migrated right so this table continues to be there but now if i run and refresh this time it says id is 2 and all the tables are back right so have we covered everything yes we have the reason why we are doing it i told you about the two different configurations why they are required one async and one is not we made edit edits to our configuration so type orm config has two different exports and then we are creating one file which is exporting the normal configuration for type orm right we created the migrations, we ran them, we deleted all the tables and we saw the migration creating all the tables again and we also saw how the revert works. So yeah, that's about it guys. That's how we deal with migrations inside Nest.js. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.